Welcome to the Stay Report. I'm your host, Devin Decker. And joining me, the guy who just accepted my Facebook friend request, Sage and Sarah Wick. How you doing, Sage? Hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> Figured it was about time we yeah. started becoming friends. <laughs> Well, it was very nice. Like, you know, honestly, I don't think I'd be sitting in my chair if I hadn't looked at my Facebook notifications and saw, oh, CJ accepted my friend. Oh, my God, I have to be in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad that I was able to catch your eye. Thank you. So thank you for that. <laughs> that's that's not the only thing. I've also been singing. So if I sound hoarser than usual, it's because I've been trying to learn all the lyrics to that Usher, Ludacris, Lil John classic, yeah, yeah. You were way into this. They say yeah a lot in that song. Like, I mean, I think, I think Little John made a career out of it. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Excellent. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm in such a good mood. But, Seijin, uh, before yeah. I tell you why I'm in a good mood, how you been, buddy? What's your last week been like? Uh, my week has been really weird. Um, everybody in this town has had the friggin' plague, and I've been <laughs> avoiding it. <laughs> Like you would the plague. Like you would avoid the plague, I would imagine, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I was not successful. So uh, I, I've been in this weird, like, deep haze the last couple of days. It's that kind of sick that just settles down on your brain and then just kind of sits there. And you just can't focus on anything. It's been – here's what I did today because of this. <laughs> oh, I'd love to hear it. I bought $20 worth of Taco Bell, and I really only wanted, like, a drink. <laughs> But I can't I just buy a the, drink. They'll think I'm crazy. I pull up and I'm like, I want Baja Blast. It's like I need some comfort food. <laughs> and the only place to get Baja Blast right now is freaking Taco Bell. So I drive up to the window, go through the whole process of getting like, a, you know, getting this drink and stuff like that. And then I'm like, you know what? I do want something. I want one of those tacos that have everything on it. Taco Grande? Is that a, what they are? A taco so Supreme? Girl, is like, that? <laughs> Can I get the Taco Grande thing? And she just goes, Sure. Hard or soft? And I said, soft. And she goes, okay. You ordered the grande said, meal! <laughs> and then she said, that'll be like $13. <laughs> and I, at the moment, didn't think for a drink and a taco. That's weird. I just said, okay. I, like, pulled up to the window, gave her the money. She then proceeds to hand me, like, a dozen soft tacos. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the grande meal. That's, yep, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the best value of taco. Didn't but... know I was buying it didn't really occur to me until i was home that i'm sitting there with like a dozen tacos in front of me in a baja blast and i'm like this is what i wanted this isn't what i wanted at all oh man i'm a little bit jealous because that just sounds delicious i'm also i want some i got a whole <laughs> yeah you, you send it right through the skype call that'd be fantastic yeah uh I don't know what the I, fuck else I'm gonna do with them. I am I am honestly oh you know what you do? You warm them up in the morning. They're actually a very nutritious breakfast. A soft oh, yeah. taco from Taco Bell. Like thirty yeah, seconds like, you know, in the microwave. Throw those crappy Taco Bell eggs on them, yeah. Oh dude, it's I, I, I seriously it's only like hundred and seventy calories. It's not a bad way to start your day. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, so I've got a bunch of old Taco Bell sitting around. That's how my week has been, my week's been. So now I am torn. I have two roads that I could follow. I could tell you what I did the last time I was the kind of sick that you're describing, or I could just relate my favorite Baja Blast story. I, I really don't know where to go here. Oh jeez, I'm, I'm so enticed. <laughs> I need to hear a Baja Blast story. Though, oh good, I think that you'll like that's just ridiculous. I think you'll like the Baja Blast story. So, <laughs> I used to work in the scene shop when we were in college. And I show up to the scene shop for my shift. Joe Short is there, and I'm using his name. I, I'm sure that if I asked him, I'd get permission. Plus, like, that's sort of his stage name, right? Joe yes. Short. Like, if yeah. I did, yeah. See, you know, Joe Short is there. And he goes up to me and he goes, Devin, have you heard? There's a new Mountain Dew. And uh, at this time, it was like 2005, so there had been a new Mountain Dew for a while. But I thought maybe I missed something. I thought maybe, like, I wasn't up on my soda releases. So I go, Joe, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, it's exclusive to Taco Bell. And I go, oh, Baja Blast. You're talking about Baja Blast. <laughs> and he's like, you've heard of it? And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's been around since I was in high school, Joe. And he's like, well, today, lunchtime, you and me, we're getting in my car, and we're getting Taco Bell and Baja Blasts. The best part <laughs> of this is knowing, knowing this dude, he is <laughs> – a thousand times more excited than you're making him out. Oh, I know that. Like, I, like, I can't. Like I, he I, is losing his shit in this story. I can it, picture him just losing his crap over a new over a new Mountain Dew flavor. He was the the level of excitement that I'm trying to bring. You have to magnify a thousand fold. He was so excited. So I go, yeah. He just got that excited about everything. Yeah, that's that's who he is. That's just Joe Short. So um, so we get in the car and we go over to the uh, Taco Bell KFC over in Wakefield. And he's like, you know, I don't really care about food, but do you have the Baja Blast? And they're like, oh, no, we don't have it at this location. 
So oh, no. Joe, as excited as he just was, all of his hopes and dreams have been dashed. Oh my god! This, <laughs> now, this turned into a terrible story. <laughs> no, it was, so then, right? There's no closer Taco Bell. We went to school in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah, we the, did. The, Surrounded by turf and wolves. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and fake wolves to, to yeah, give away the keys. Granted, most of them were fake. But yes, <laughs> turf and uh, wolves were all that were around us. So so the closest Taco Bell is Coventry. Like, at this point, And he's like, I'm not going to Coventry just for this soda. And you'd think there, that's where the story ends. But no, Devin Decker being the mensch that he is... I go and I buy a two a liter of Aquafina water and I dump it out at home. I don't I drink it, but I empty it out and I clean it. I go to Taco Bell in Coventry and I say, "How much to fill this bottle with Baja Blast?" And they're like, it's "Just the price of a large soda, you can fill it." So I do that, and I made up a logo for him and I brought him a bottle of Baja Blast so that he could try it the next day. He wasn't a fan. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, it's amazing how you became the hero of that story. Well, that, that's 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 why I like. Did you think I? You know, it was fun though. It was because again, like he was like super Mister excited about everything. He was so like you can see that. But then like, and then I get it for him, and like that same excitement again because he, all of his hopes and dreams have been dashed, and then suddenly it's in his hand, and he pours it, and I had it nice and chilled for him, and he's just like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? Because it's so good and because, like you said, I kind of inserted myself into that story. Here's another story about last time I was as sick as you are. I watched Dumb and Dumber 2 three times in a row on HBO. Now, wait a minute. Dumb and Dumberer or Dumb and Dumber 2? Dumb and Dumber T.O. The okay. 10, 20 years later, uh, joining Harry and Lloyd uh, older and looking for the illegitimate son of Harry. And you watched it three times? Three times. To- start to finish three times in a row. Because it was on. for the secret? <laughs> what were you doing? I was sick. I was sick as a dog. I couldn't leave my house. I couldn't leave my house. I couldn't leave my room. It's and not it that I couldn't leave my house. storyline that you just had to keep rewatching it. <sighs> I, I just. It, it, that's the thing. Because, like, it's HBO, right? So, like, I can watch it. And it's not like HBO programmed. And now, after Dumb and Dumber 2, Dumb and Dumber 2. I, I then went to the West Coast feed where it was just starting and watched Dumb and Dumber 2 again. Did you enjoy it, though? That's the part I'm confused about. I do. I, you know what? It's, it's no Dumb and Dumber by any stretch of the imagination. But Rob Riggles really shines in that film, doing mm. what, doing what Martin, um, Michael Starr did. In the first movie, yeah, 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 being that, being the the heel to everything that they do, yeah, he's yeah. so good, and the fact, just the the jokes where he's painted as something and then his eyes open as full camouflage, like I didn't learn anything new anytime I watched the film because really what you see is what you get with Dumb and Dumber Two, but it was just so like frivolous, and I was yeah, so yeah. like. Oh, man, but sick movies are the best, right? Like, everybody's got that one movie that they kind of just go to whenever they're just not feeling well. Like, I used to see somebody where it was Hercules, right? Every time she got sick, we would have to we would have to put Disney's Hercules on, which was not a bad thing to sit through a billion times, right? Yeah, no, but, her- like, of course. We already- like, everybody's got that thing that they kind of turn to. I will say, for me, most of the time, what it turns <laughs> into is Bob's Burgers. Like, when I'm not feeling well, I just throw Bob's Burgers on and, like, just let that play for just days now. I get that. I really feel like for me, it is it's it's cable movies like Mm -hmm. the Dumb and Dumber 2 thing is that was a rare exception. I can't believe that I did that. I can't believe that I'm like, oh, Dumb and Dumber 2 is on again. Might as well. Oh, uh, man. When I was uh, when I was a kid, getting sick on days when James Bond marathons that were on were awesome on Spike TV or whatever it was back then. Do, like, I, do you have any of the premium channels? Because I'm pretty sure it was James Bond weekend because oh, I couldn't no. go through my guide without seeing uh, Never Say Never Again or Live yeah, and yeah. Let Die. And, and I'm just like and the worst part about that is it was it was always like in the middle. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't want to watch this from the middle. I want to watch it from the beginning. Oh, so, I don't think I've seen a full, besides a Daniel Craig James Bond, I don't think I've seen a full James Bond from beginning to end since I was 15, because I just watch them on TV all the time during these marathons, <laughs> and I come I, I come in in the middle of one, and then I watch through about the middle of the next one, and I figure that makes about one good James Bond yeah, movie. Yeah, that's like, a, that's like a solid James Bond, especially if you get like a little bit of Connery and a little bit of Dalton. Yeah, 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 and then you're good. You're just like, all right. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, he, Roger Moore shows up. Um, <laughs> 
but yeah, it's uh, and I mean, I, I wasn't sick this weekend as bad as you, but it was just kind of a lazy weekend for me, and I delve right back into that cable television. I watched, um, oof, what, did I, what the frick did I watch? Uh, oh, I watched Old School again for the first time all the way through since high school. <laughs> Excellent. 40. Actually, a really, that's actually a really excellent uh, R-rated comedy. Like, for what it is, that is such a well-made one of those. It's the fucking problem, though, too, if you want if you like want to like break it down, is that Old School was such a good R-rated comedy that they thought, like, we can do this again. And unfortunately, Lightning does not strike as many times as Old School. I mean, because there are other ones that are just as good since Old School. I feel like Anchorman... Oh, yeah kind of caught some of that lightning in a bottle uh wedding crashers definitely but that movie unleashed upon the world thousands of r-rated comedies because oh they'll sell they'll yeah. sell yeah i feel like american pie is like the big thing that everything buddy points to right but i think like the difference between something like an old school and an american pie is that like american pie was trying to capture a very specific like 80s nostalgia feel to it right Yes, like it, in, in the way it's that a teen movie. It. It, 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 it's, yeah. a, it's the difference between it is American Pie, even with all of the sex and raunchiness of it, it's very Porky's 2.0. Right. Where old school is really, this is for adults, by adults, an R-rated comedy. It's much more the National Lampoon, like Animal House style. Like, yeah. you, won't, you only get this if you've lived through this, this type of thing. Because I think that was one of the big things about old school for me when I was a kid was that like I watched it and I thought like the nudity and stuff was funny. But like <laughs> I didn't give a shit about the storyline. And now, like, going back and watching old school, I'm just like, oh, fuck, man. Yes, studying for this shit and all of this <laughs> nonsense and, like, trying to find yourself. It, 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 yeah, no, it, it, it's Yeah, it's college kind of bullshit. I'm not going to lie to you, but, yep. yeah, it's, it's good. And the crazy thing watching old school is that, like, the guy who plays Mike Ross on Suits is one of the pledges to the, the, the fraternity. And oh, I'm like, man. and I didn't recognize him. I was like, oh, it's the cute guy from Suits. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then I'm like, holy crap it is. Aaron Korsh, I think his name yeah. is. I uh, I went back and watched um, Friends with Benefits this weekend, which I've was a sick movie it. for another I friend of mine. I own it, it's, but I've never it's, watched it. All right. In, in the war between No Strings Attached and Friends with Benefits, it... it it was the clear winner for me. <laughs> well, I, you know um, what? I have I have a close personal connection to Natalie Portman, so that's going to be a very difficult war for me to fight. We're not even go. We're not even talking. No, we're not going to go through with that. I am very sorry about that day, Seachin. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an inside joke, so you know that that means we're all caught up with each other. Uh, but oh, I will man. also say one of the other movies I revisited this weekend, in addition to old school, was Forty Days and Forty Nights. Mm, yeah, nice. Which, I love that movie, and it was made more prescient because Prozac, the guys who do the credit song, just released a new song, and that was awesome because I fucking love Prozac, and they've nice. been on like a six-year hiatus. They've just started doing like singles to iTunes every six months. I found them on Friday, and they're fantastic. Excellent, they have man. not missed a step at all. And I also watched Ghostbusters Answer the Call again, uh, which is a whole another discussion for another episode. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, no, sorry. I, uh, I was I was commending you for using the full title because if you had just said Ghostbusters. I, right. So. Well, I refuse to I just call it. it I refuse to call it Ghostbusters because no, Ghostbusters you was released in 1984. In 2016, go. we got Ghostbusters answer the call. I think that's like how it's officially down as far as like financial things are concerned. Yeah, so it has, yeah, right. right. Like that's and it's what it's the title card. I go by the title card. Also, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. That's just Rogue One to me because <laughs> because it doesn't say a Star Wars story on either of the title cards. Right. Like that was just the marketing. Oh, no, people I might think, know I think the Star Wars story is going to be kind of like the like weird pseudo genre they tried to build for it because I think like the Han Solo movie is probably going to be a Star Wars story as well, right? I hope like, it's called a Han Solo story, a Star Wars a Star story. Wars story. <laughs> uh, then the sequel can be another Han Solo story, and Calm we can your just shit. Con- not in this one. That's <laughs> the, that's the subtitle. Uh, Chewbacca is still on Kishik. He has to hang out with Yoda before he meets Han Solo. That's right. I know the name of the Wookiee planet. I'm not even a fan. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, 
But that can't be all you did this weekend. No, that can't. Well, of course it's not all I live. I live in New England. So you know yeah. what I did this weekend? What I waited happened in for New England this weekend. <laughs> I watched the Super Bowl, and I watched my Patriots earn their fifth title. They oh, they that won their thing fifth that Super Bowl. That, that, that little old thing. That little old thing that like, are you like totally removed from it in Ohio? Because no, like, I watched it, man. I watched it. <laughs> the, the difference is, is I'm the only one here who's rooting for the Patriots. <laughs> well, of course, because they are like the evil empire of sports. <laughs> I mean, the best part is, is that they're really not. That like that's the thing that kills me, right? Is like all of these people beforehand were talking about you know how much they hate the Patriots, and now you look on <laughs> you look on Google today, and if you type in Tom Brady, do you know the first thing that comes up? Tom Brady cements his status as all-time greatest quarterback. Second thing that comes up, Tom Brady best ever. Third thing that comes up, <laughs> Tom Brady leaves Joe Montana generation no choice but to crown him next all-time best. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like, I want to believe that you literally just googled Tom Brady. Oh, I, I will send you the screenshot. I have it right in front of me. I love it. I love it. But, but yeah, you're man, right. That is, And I will say prospectively, I will say that that was the Chicago Tribune, Pro Football, NBC Sports, followed by Sporting News. There you All go. I'm citing my sources on this shit. That's right. No, we man, have to. It's true. You cannot deny him. Regardless of how bad he drives with his hands off the wheel, smoking a cigar, whether or not that really happened or not, I choose to believe it did. It definitely did. <laughs> I know. I know. But the best part about okay, so Ugh, so here's if... the thing. Everybody wants to. Everybody really wants to come down on him for the p- politics stuff, and I don't see any reason why they should not do that when he says and does something dumb. Yeah. No. Well, that's the thing. Anybody who says or does something dumb, on some level, you should be held accountable for it, right? right? So for sure, hold him accountable for this stuff. But at the end of the day, he's not the only player on that team. <laughs> He's not. And on top of that, he him saying something dumb and doing something dumb is terrible, and he should be called out on it. But it's not the equivalent of what half of these guys in the NFL do. Think like, oh my God. he's not of, a like, rapist. He's not right. a murderer. <laughs> there are rapists and murderers and wife beaters in the in the NFL. What Tom Animal Brady abusers? Yeah, like child abusers. Yep. <laughs> all over, all over there. Tom Brady. No. I mean, you can't say that no one on the Patriots because there was definitely a murderer on the Patriots, but yeah, Tom but Brady is not that. Out, <laughs> the second they found out, what do the Patriots do? They fired that they dude kicked him as to the opposed curb. to any other team which would have given the motherfucker a raise. But That's anyway. true, right? Ben Roethlisberger is still a quarterback, and he's fact, a rapist. And he's getting paid more now than he was before all that. So, <laughs> Look um, at that. Man. We somehow no, made like, football you, you know, political. So all of this breaks down into this weird conversation of like, I mean, if you really want to get down to it, like the NFL is a terrible corporation. We need to talk about that. <laughs> the NFL is pretty. Uh, oh, God. The, the booing for Roger Goodell was mm-hmm. so sweet. <laughs> and and not just because it, it's it, he's dug his heels in so deep on the whole deflate gate thing. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, science has told you that that's that's conservation of mass. That's, proven, that's how it works. Yeah, they, they've they've actually gone and proven you wrong, man. Relax. And but he doubled down, like tripled down. And you know, and the thing is, is like he's got his Goodell's got his supporters now from everybody else that's mad at the Patriots, and so that's just gonna stick around for a while. But I guess we'll just have to sit up here on this throne with five rings and just deal with that instead. Oh, good. You know what? I wish it were seven rings. I wish it were six rings. I, I wish it were six rings because there is one that I totally blame. Us, I blame you and I for one for one ring that we lost. And that oh. is because we sat at my house and we watched the first half of the first New England Patriots, New York Giants Super Bowl. We watched it together and mm-hmm. then we got into a car and we drove to Providence. And somehow in that commute from my house to Providence to watch the second half of the game, the Patriots just shit a brick. Yeah, we walked away from that game, and they just didn't. They, yeah, they we just were singing started. "Refugee" they by were like, Tom Devin Petty. Aren't watching anymore? Why are we even playing? Yeah, <laughs> it was it was ridiculous. It it, it felt like TCG. Like it, it it affected me last night. I was invited to go out at, to a bar to watch the game with people, and I'm like, uh, you know, no, I've been drinking. I probably shouldn't drive. But the real reason, and you heard it here, folks, is because I thought that if I didn't watch the game in my ancestral home. They would lose. <laughs> I am not oh. above superstition. 
Football brings out the best, though, and the best superstitions in people. It really, it really does. You don't think I want? I definitely wanted to go out, man. I've been working on some stuff. That, that's I can't not wait true. until like in twenty years when you're like knocking on a stranger's house because you're like, hey, I used to live here. I, mean, I need to watch the Super Bowl <laughs> here this weekend. You need me to. But here's the thing, Sajin. This house will still be in New England. The Patriots will be in that Super Bowl, and the person there will go, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it could mean that they win their their seventeenth ring. Come on in, sir. Yep. Grab some hot wings. <laughs> And you will have made the best friends ever. No, and I'll man, never see them again. But but the Patriots will win, and it will that, all be because I was here watching. Yeah, man. So you were watching last night of for the course, whole game. Of course. Oh, the whole game. Uh, okay, so you watched the whole hard. game, too. Okay, that's uh, the question. I'll be honest. I watched up until the half, about five minutes into the third, decided I can't watch this right now, oh. walked away for the, last, for the next ten minutes of play. But, man, the second that I got a text that was like, hey – Something happened to the game. I was like, what? <laughs> and I came back, and I watched the last 10 minutes of the fourth quarter, Jeez. and that overtime, that, like, five minutes in overtime, which was amazing. It was uh, just, yeah. it was some of the best football ever. 246 yards in one quarter. That's what Tom Brady threw for. Yep. That is what Tom Brady threw for in 15 minutes of play. It was crazy. It was it was it was like watching him when he first got started. It was like remember watching his first when, Super Bowl. Oh my god. Remember, not even the first Super Bowl. Remember those first couple of games when they pulled him off of the off of, what was he like third string, right? Yeah, he was they, third like, string. And they just put him out there and all of a sudden he's just throwing things like 30, 40 yards and just landing everything. And then at the time, who was he throwing to? There was the the runner that he had that was just Oh god. Oh, I can't remember his name because but he would throw, and then that dude and that guy would catch it for it, another forty yards. It, it was fucking, crazy. It reinvented football. It I changed mean, football that it day. It's one of those things where I like I cared about the Patriots growing up. It's impossible in New England not to, right? But it's one of those things where it becomes like a passing thing. Where like, oh, they're doing well. I guess I'll start watching every week with my family, right? But man, the second that Tom Brady came along around, it was just like, oh, I need to be watching football like every week. The I only, need to actually get into this. The only what reason I miss a Patriots football game is if I am not in the state. Yeah. Like if I if I'm not in the state like okay, but if I if I can get to a television in Rhode Island, I'm watching it. Well, because why now, wouldn't I? We're at a point now, man, where I live out of state and yeah, I don't get to see the Patriots every week, but more often than not, there's some bar playing a Patriots game on the weekend. Whoa. If I really wanted to, I could find them around here too, yeah. which like I've said before on the show, I'm out in the middle of fucking nowhere and I can still find a Patriots game, right? Like yes. they they are everywhere. Right, cuz they're 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 going to get the views. They're going to get the mm -hmm. eyeballs. Even if you're not a fan, there are those people who just want to root against them. Mm -hmm. It's so funny that in Boston, uh, we have the mentality of, I like two teams, who, the Red Sox and whoever beats the Yankees. And right. everywhere else, everywhere outside of New England, it is, I like two teams, their team, and whoever beats the Patriots. <laughs> and it's so crazy that we have both sides of that right oh, yeah. in this area. But, you know, it's it's like you were saying, at some point, the rebels have to become the evil empire. You know, when we were younger and the Pats weren't doing shit, like we were constantly like the oh, underdogs. Right? When they got to their first Super Bowl the year that I was born against the Chicago Bears and just laid up a, like awful. It was not a good yep. game. Just right. not a good game. And then 10 years later, 1996, they get in they're against Green Bay. Same thing. Same thing, and you're just like, it hurts. And those were just two. And that was their first and second Super Bowl appearances ever in franchise history. Right. And then 2001 rolls around, you know, and instead of a space odyssey, we got a Brady odyssey, and he <laughs> led us on this dynasty path. Yep. And then the back-to-back -back 2003, 2004, like, it changed football. It changed New England. It really did. Oh, for sure. I mean, like, there's a lot to be said about, like, a lot of what was going on with the Patriots and that, like, that wave sweeping what ended up being Red Sox Nation. Yeah. Right? And oh. then, like, leading to a bunch of that sort of stuff. And I mean, like, you have a bunch of people with a lot of pride in their in, in their teams in that area. And, like, it's impossible for those two teams to not affect each other. So to then in that year, 2005, where 2004. the Red Sox won. 2004. The, oh, 2004. Well, where 2000, the Red Sox won. Yeah. And the Patriots won. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. Yes.
it and was I mean, freaking and crazy. We shouldn't, and we also shouldn't shy away from the Celtics of the Bruins because we're just going to do this now because, like, yeah, well, yeah that's it. Well, the, well, the, w- welcome. If you're a fan of the Say Report, this is probably going to be one of the only sports segments. I mean, we're going to talk about everything, but like, we're getting it all out now. Yeah, and we, thirty-seven championships. That is what the combined sports franchises have won in Boston. Thirty-seven. Crazy. It's freaking crazy. And it's one team per. It's not like New York where they have the Giants and the Jets to shore right. up their numbers. And no. Buffalo, right? That right, that right, counts. Right. That's a that's a New York team. Screw you. Screw you, New yeah. York. <laughs> Get three teams. Yeah, th- yeah, three football. We got one. And that represents six states. Yep. Oh, and how they represent. Oh, I love it. I freaking no, love it. That was good it. stuff, man. That game was so it was enjoyable. I never counted them out. I think that was the thing is that like even when they were down 28 to 3 everyone in the house like oh. kind of looked at each other and they're just reading off all those stats nobody's ever come back from a deficit of more than 13 points and like all of this other stuff that they're yeah. just reading off yeah. down there is just and then all of a sudden they came back man. history just... was made like 17 times first quarterback winning five uh first overtime in a super bowl largest uh deficit to come back and win like this this was one literally was it, for uh, the record in history books. Was it White that received like more passes in a Super Bowl than anybody? Uh, more in touchdowns too. Um, oh, man, Jesus. <laughs> and, okay, so yeah, that like, so that's the question because like let's just crib from every sports show that I've watched and listened to today. Do you feel that Tom Brady deserved to be MVP of the Super Bowl? Yeah, man. Because I think the big thing is like. <laughs> You see this stuff in sports shows all the time, so I don't mean to like assign too much of this based on like my 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 warped sense of reality through television. But like he is the leader <laughs> of that team out there, right? And when he fails, it's on him. And when they win, it's on him. And like he fucking rallied them in one quarter to do what they did. And then on top of that, like you said, in one quarter, the amount of of yardage that he was able to pass. So between his leadership being able to lead them to that win in the end, and the fact that on top of that he was performing insanely well better than i think he has all season like he hasn't been doing bad, terrible this season but man like right, that he was on a, he was on another was like, level last yeah. night right so i mean like yeah yeah i mean you could look at a couple of other really insane passes and catches in the in that's but but like yeah no, the only other the only other person well i have two because for a long time when it looked like the pats were probably going to to lose and and that's just saying like and even though i never lost hope it's just like well you know like right now history is looking upon this as the falcons were are going to win the super bowl a lot of people a lot of people just around here on social media were like well they they gave it up up oh, they lost patriots are out of it and i love that i never did anything like that because i'm like they're not out of it they're still the patriots right yeah, man. If maybe if at they were down point, 90 points. At but... one point, the uh, the odds, I guess they were saying that the betting odds on the Pats dropped to like 99.6% in favor of the Falcons or oh something like that. God. Like it's a crazy <laughs> number. Like it basically was like a no bet situation because people were just like, the, no the Falcons was, no just No one was taking this. the bad bet. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. But but you look at it and, and the, only, the, only, the only other one would be uh, 97 on the Falcons, Jarrett. And oh, you're yeah. never going to give it to a defensive player ever. A defensive player is never going to get MVP, um, but he was on fire. He sacked Brady so many times. Like I just want that guy's oh, name. He's the reason, yeah, he's the reason this game was almost as terrible as it was. If it was not for the fact that they figured out a way around him, you know what I mean? Like, yes, exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. I just, I just want his name to be out there. And the other one is White, number twenty-eight. The catches and the plays that he made, very like strong contender for MVP. Uh, my father said, "I think they got to give it to him." But honestly, end of the day, if your if your fucking leader gives up hope, that trickles down. And the fact that Tom Brady, looking at the scoreboard, never gave up hope for winning the Super Bowl Fifty One, is a hundred percent why the Patriots are are now five time champs. And, you know, and I had some people wondering, like early on around me, you know, like wondering if they were just pulling like a rope a dope, or they just letting the Falcons just tire themselves out. And I honestly was just like if they are if they are 28 fucking points is not is that's too much <laughs> just like all right guys now we have to a dope we've roped yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
but I think this is it. And then they turned it around and they did it, man. So maybe I don't know. I, you know what? And it's a hundred. It's, it's, it's uh, let's let's talk about just how believable it is that they did pull a classic rope a dope on mm-hmm. them because they had the ball. Like I, I think it was like seventy five percent of the game was was Patriot possession. Uh, so the the defense was on the field more than the offense for the Falcons. There's no that, doubt about that. And, and then that fourth quarter, they just ran that defense down. They were tired. They were tired because they'd already played essentially a full game of football. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Man, <sighs> I don't think I will ever see a, a, a Super Bowl quite like that for a I, long time. It's true. But, I mean, uh, greatest of all time, I, I don't know. I mean... I don't know about that, but yeah. man, like in a year when I got to watch the the Cubs win the, the World Series <laughs> and now this Super Bowl, it's been a pretty good couple of months for sports despite the rest of the world falling apart. That's true. And you know what? But th- there's there's the real scary thing, right? Bread and circus mm-hmm. will keep people happy. And there's our circus yep. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Let's do it now. Let's put our tinfoil hats on, kids. Let's talk about this. <laughs> well, the Patriots won, right? Well, right? the Patriots so, won. Clearly. Cal- this, Cal- this, California was, was blown up and sunk into the ocean. Yeah. That didn't really happen, but there's a hundred things that could have gone on while that was happening. The, it really is like all eyes were on the Super Bowl. That's not true. Only 111.4 million eyes were on the Super Bowl. Only. <laughs> well, do you know what? Because they didn't break the record. Uh, yeah. Last year was 114.3 million. You know the crazy thing about both of those numbers? I read them at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I just random accessed them. <laughs> definitely definitely 118 definitely, million. Definitely, de- definitely 111.4 million. I'm a, I'm a good driver. I'm, I'm an excellent driver. <laughs> Actually, I'm not an excellent driver. I, I got into an accident during the snowstorm last week. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, I just uh, I just uh, rear-ended somebody. I, I hit. The... I like I like how you felt the need to cover that though. Like anybody on the show was going to fact check whether or not you were a good driver. CJ, I'm also not a good driver. <laughs> you you had to put a fictitious traffic gnome in my car to tell me to slow down when I was speeding. <laughs> you basically hypnotized me to see that I was over the speed limit and imagine a mystical gnome peered in my passenger seat to say. Hey, Devin, maybe you want to slow down. <laughs> it's true. It's it's true. But that gnome, he kept a good eye on you for a few years. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> <sighs> oh, man, Devin. Yeah, that was a good game last night. That was really but, a good uh, game. Anything else to say about it before we move on to the other topic of discussion? Uh, I uh, I just want to end this by saying that uh, I, I, Tom Brady's a big old dope, and I still love him. <laughs> I want to end it by saying there was that one time that I won a chance to meet Tom Brady, and that photo that I have with him is is probably one of my most cherished items. So y'all know where we stand on this shit. Yeah. So yeah. So a little bit biased. Uh, Patriots bias. The say report. Uh, so the other thing that I did besides watch the Super Bowl is uh, I watched movies, as I said, and a movie that I watched was The Nice Guys. Have you seen The Nice Guys with uh? Golden Globe winning actor Ryan Gosling. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, it's a Shane Black movie, right? It is Shane Black. Yes. Does it take place at Christmas? I forget. Uh, the last scene of the movie is at Christmas time. Yes, excellent. Okay. And I was so happy because in the theater, I'm like, oh my God, he didn't do anything with Christmas. And then that last scene comes and it's Christmas in LA. And I'm just like, oh, I love you, Shane Black. I love <laughs> never, that you worked changed. it in. Oh, you son of a bitch. You know what that is? Is that was him straight up knowing that everybody sitting there is just like it can't be a true Shane Black movie unless something happens at Christmas. Waiting the entire movie, being disappointed, and then that comes up. And, and then that happened, like, and it was, and yeah. it was perfect, and it was perfection. Um, and that just all goes to show. Well, first of all, I think it was just myself, my mother, and my sister when we saw the Nice Guys. So of course, I was the only one in the theater who got that. But. <laughs> <clears throat> So why were you watching The Nice Guys? I was watching The Nice Guys because it came on after Ghostbusters Answer the Call. But then watching The Nice Guys, I was reminded of what my review and summation of it was last year when I saw it. And that it was the perfect pilot for a television show. And that if they could deliver a show that had Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe and the girl, you need that little girl. I wish I knew the actress's name, but she is so fantastic in that movie. 
Nice. That if you had those three in an actual television show, like on HBO or Netflix, I would make it required viewing. I'd watch it twice a week. And if nothing else was on, I would throw it on because that that movie just establishes these characters and their world so well that you just want more. Right, right, right. And that got me thinking about all of these movies that are now TV shows. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Recently. Like been, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, well, the weird thing is, is there's been this huge uptick in that, right? Like this idea of taking these these television, uh, taking these movies and turning them into these television shows. But it's not like it didn't exist in the past. Well, no. It I just mean, seems like what it is is it's just weirdly like the go-to at the moment. Well, it's nostalgia. It's a hundred percent. We live in a world that's fueled by nostalgia right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't think right. anybody could deny that. Right. And you look at it, and you know something like Mash, which was is probably the most popular television right. series of all time, based on a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that's that's what they want. They want to mine that again. And yeah, spe- yeah. Or you get to something like uh, like Buffy, which like ended up the movie actually ended up not doing well at all, and is actually pretty pretty looked down upon. But then it led to one of the most successful TV shows of all time. Exactly. So like, so it's also it's not just let's take successful movies and turn them into TV shows. Sometimes it's we know we have a really good idea here, and it didn't work as a movie. So what can we do with a TV show? And that that's also a really interesting move. Yeah, I mean it's it's a huge thing. It's not a new trend, but you know, this year alone you had Lethal Weapon coming to Fox, Shane Black just for the mm-hmm. hell of it, right? Minority mm-hmm. Report, right? That that was the end of last yeah, season. They did a yeah, Minority that's right. Report. Minority that, Report that, was a, just was a shit a brick. That that didn't it last no, at all. That didn't go anywhere. Uh, shooter on USA, mm-hmm. the Mark Wahlberg movie, and last Thursday, uh, Training Day. Training day. Came Training out. day started up. Yeah, so, yeah. The one that the one that I got hooked on uh, is Limitless. That's the other one that that. Yeah, from last season. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. only one season. But you know, and you and you say you got hooked on it. And what would you say is the reason why? Um. Well, okay. So uh, there's two different ways in which they approach these kinds of shows. In some ways, they try and ignore the movie and they do their own thing, right? And that's like Lethal Weapon is that way, and and a couple of the other ones that you mentioned, right? But the way that Limitless works is it's it's one of the other types of shows where they actually jump off from where the movie leaves off. Um, and so what it is is it's actually a continuation of that story. And what's funny about that is I don't remember Limitless being a huge success. Like, well, I, I mean, actually – Bradley Cooper, uh, right. he, was, he was real big at the time. So it made enough money to not necessitate a sequel but definitely yeah. for – like people are interested in this world. Well, yeah. And you know what it struck me as is Limitless always struck me as that movie that he had made three years ago and then he (laughs) became really popular and they were like, oh, we've been sitting on this for three years. Now let's put that. You know what I mean? Like like they bank movies for these guys until they hit it and then they can put something like that out. Right. And the thing is, I actually kind of really love the movie. (laughs) Have you seen it? I have not. Here's the thing. When they announced the show, I was very excited about it and I went out and I bought a copy of Limitless. Mm -hmm. It is still in the shrink wrap because (laughs) I, I couldn't. I figured like. I watch those shows with my father, like shows like that, like Person of Interest is a real go to, was a go to for us, and like yeah. Intelligence with uh, Sawyer from Lost. I can't think of his last name, Josh. Whatever. What's his last Sawyer, name? Sawyer, right? So, Sawyer is the main cat is the character name. I'm the I don't I'm care. talking the his actor. Josh Sawyer now. That's yeah, what Josh I'm calling Sawyer. Him. Um, but yeah, uh, so I figured that like Limitless would be this thing, and we could sit down and watch the movie, and then get excited for the show. And he just had no desire to watch the movie. And you know, it's very difficult. I mean, I I live at home with my parents. Whatever choices. Um, and if you're not watching a show that everybody else is watching, it's very difficult to get the real estate. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it just kind of fell by the wayside. Well, I will say that you definitely got to give Limitless the movie a shot. When well, you I own it. I will definitely watch it. It's super interesting. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't know, Bradley Cooper plays this guy that is down on his luck, shall we say. Um, and a friend of his offers him the ability to basically gain like hyper intelligence and like all of these new talents and abilities as long as he stays on this pill. Which, of course, leads to a whole bunch of like crazy thriller-esque things where like there's conspiracies, there's a little bit of action involved. The pill makes him super smart, but then like there's a lot of side effects to it. Um, but the big thing in the movie is this idea of him using a drug and getting roped in with the wrong people, right? The show jumps off of that, and Bradley Cooper is hinted at in the world, I'll say, without spoiling too much. At some point, I'm going to have to spoil a lot more about this. I'm pretty sure he shows up in the fourth episode. (laughs) In fact, I'm pretty sure that's how CBS sold the fourth episode. (laughs) I'll be entirely fair. 
he shows up at the pilot. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, so like Bradley Cooper is in this world and exists, right? And the thing is, is that he is now like, like he is revered as a, this po- political figure and, and all that sort of stuff. That's all you really know in the background at the beginning of the show. So it, t- it takes off with yet another kind of, loner white dude who you're supposed to think is kind of like down on his luck and trashy but the truth is it's um oh what is the kid's name from greek uh shoot i gotta look his name all i'm thinking of is the movie going greek so while you look that Um, up i'll do i'll do a brief aside to going greek great little b movie uh straight to dvd (laughs) only saw it because i worked at a you know a, a movie store at the time and after seeing old school we just got real hungry for those college comedies and going greek was there I got it. It's right here. I've had it for a while. It takes two seconds with the internet now, man. <laughs> I liked that little aside. That was our non sequitur of the week. Nice. Uh, Jake McDormand is the star of Limitless, the TV show, oh, and cool. uh, he was uh, he was Evan on Greek, which is like the big thing that I know him for. But also, he had a little show called um, uh, New York Love Story. I think was the full name. Oh of my it. god, I love New York Love Story with Anna Bro- with uh, with T- uh, Gish Anna Beth Gish. Yeah, 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 for like. 10 or 11 episodes. That's right? not her name. Uh, it's something like that, though. Yeah, but it's a, it's a gorgeous little Anna show. Tipton. That, that, like, Anna Lay Tipton. Anna Lay Tipton is her name. Half a season. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah, lasted yeah. For, it lasted for less than half a season. I think there were right. five episodes total. But it, no, there were, there were about 11 because it did get to finish. That's one of the best things about it is you actually watch it and it actually does have a nice like ending, non-ending to it. They clearly didn't know if they were going to get to keep going or not. Um, Kevin Deacon needs to seek out the remaining episodes of New York Love Story. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh, they were all up on Hulu at one point. Um, so Jake McDormand is this really good like television actor who's been around for a, dec- for a decade or so now. And I-, I just love that he keeps getting this kind of work. And so he shows so that uh, last one season and then get canceled. <laughs> Yeah, he keeps doing these kind of like little projects that are like really interesting and like really like they catch on just enough that he's able to get like a whole like because Limitless. Yeah, it's one season, but that's 24 episodes of a show. Like it's actually a pretty decent chunk of television. And I'm pretty sure that they knew that it was going to just be the one season. Right. So it's kind of like a whole complete story. It's one of those things where nowadays nothing lasts more than a season as far as they're concerned when they pick it up, right? So everything is aimed to have a nice wrap-up ending at the end of at least the first season. You know, and if you get picked up, you get picked up. If you don't, you know. And then you run for eight more seasons than you needed and ruin yourself into the ground. How oh. I Met Your Mother. <laughs> I was going to say Supernatural, but yeah, it goes Yo, around. There you go. Uh, all, all of them. <laughs> Uh, so Jake McDormand now plays this this like down on his luck white dude that we're supposed to feel bad for, despite the fact that he's like gorgeous and and can play guitar really well and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> so like he now is in this position where he's being offered this drug and and of course they have to turn it into this like monster of the week style. Like he ends up working for the FBI. He uses the drug to catch like serial killers and like all that sort of stuff. But what's really interesting is that they're not shying away from the stuff in the movie of like the political, like thriller aspect of it and all that stuff. So like I said, Bradley Cooper straight up shows up in the first episode and he's just like, I need you to do something for me and then like fade to black. So now we know that Bradley Cooper's <laughs> character is like hugely important to the story for something. Right. We just don't know why, why that is yet. So it's got me. It's like, I am, I'm hooked in and want to see it because I really enjoy the movie. Um, and like I said, it was one of those weird little movies where it definitely felt like it had been made three years previously. Cause like Bradley Cooper is just having the fucking time of his life in this weird little sci-fi action thriller. And like, it, it's so out of place for him because at that point, like, you know him for being a leading man in like some pretty big movies. Like, that's true. That is, that I think is at very that point, true. And Oscar nominated by the time that had come up. Right? Yeah, because Silver Linings Station. Playbook yeah. is definitely what they released that movie on the back of. Right. Especially so, because Robert De Niro's in both of them, right? Right. Robert like, De Niro shows up in a small side role in Limitless, the the, uh, the movie. Yes. Yeah, that's So he thing. shows up in like two or three scenes. Yeah, yeah. So it's totally so, like, like Robert De Niro met him on Limitless and then was like, hey, David O. Russell, cast this hunk of, hunk of meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they ended up having a really big like working relationship together. Like, yeah. And and what's really funny is actually if you listen to Bradley Cooper talk about Limitless, I think he actually like really appreciates the fuck out of that movie. Because if you watch um, Inside the Actor Studio, he straight up talks about like how he like grew up loving like Robert De Niro. So just based on the fact that that movie was the one the movie that got him in the same room <laughs> as De Niro, he just is like I, I I would say yes to that movie ten times over. <laughs> yeah, Robert De Niro's in this movie. Uh, yeah. What do I have to do? Yeah. So like you watch Limitless and you're like, this is a pretty decent little film. I don't think it's going to it doesn't it doesn't seem to want to go anywhere, though. Right. Like it doesn't. I haven't go seen it yet. Don't tell me that. <laughs> but like, well, no, like it's it's a great film, but it's one of those things where you watch it and you're just like, yeah, 
that was a perfect little package for what it was. Like, I didn't need a sequel, right? Like, that sort of thing. So when the TV show got announced, I was a little weirded out, but also, like, I could tell how they were going to ruin it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like an instant where you're just like, no. oh, yeah, I could see other this Oh, one. like, why well, I didn't watch Rush Hour. Because there you, go. you can't there have you a go. rush. You can't do rush hour without Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Well, Their rush the things, hour. You know, right. <laughs> and the other thing about shows like this, like Limitless, like Rush Hour, is the ticking clock aspect. The idea that, like, they have this thing that they need to do and they've only got this long to do it. Normally, it's like a day. Right. Yeah. And like without turning it into an episode of 24 where you're showing every hour of that day, how do you repeat that for week to week to week without it getting old really fast? I don't know, but it's CBS's bread and butter. The yeah, reason yeah, why yeah. Limitless was procedural enemy of the week type stuff was strictly because it was a CBS mm -hmm. show. Because yeah. that's what their market wants. So what's really interesting is seeing the ways that they make it that show, but then they try and really tell this larger story around it. So I'm really excited to see where they go with it. I'm very excited to watch Limitless the fact now. That the fact that they actually like doled some money out to get Bradley Cooper in the first episode, and I know he shows up again later on, and like they're not shying away from all of the weird like um, addiction stuff that was in the movie and the and the like uh, and all the conspiracy stuff. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a hell of a watch, and I'm hoping the fact that it's one season means that it'll be like just one really good con condensed story. Yeah, that's um, that that's the one thing I can't confirm that, but I am fairly certain that they knew going in that they were they were they had an expiration date. So they didn't try to. It's not like uh, Sam Beckett never returned home. Right. It's not like that gamble at the end of freaking Quantum Leap. Right, right, right. So I. Um, oh, no, go ahead, man. So I'm real happy that you delineated the two. You can you can do a TV show based on a movie and just ignore what existed or where it stemmed from, because Training Day. Let's mm -hmm. be honest. I freaking hate the movie Training Day, and I don't know how. It's just like it it doesn't work for me despite having everything in it that I love. I love Ethan Hawke. I'm a huge fan of Denzel Washington. I like a good cop movie, but something about it like it's too dirty or it just goes on too long that uh, it's Anton Fuqua, right? Yeah, it is Anton Fuqua. Uh, like how do you feel about some of his other movies? Like like is, really, is he just not The Equalizer didn't work for me and again it felt like it just it, he takes his time with his films. Mm -hmm. Which is why, I mean, I can definitely say that I loved The Magnificent Seven, but again, that's a movie that has like an arc that you need to follow, right. um, and, it, it, and it didn't feel like it overstayed its welcome, which okay. I can definitely say about Training Day, I feel definitely, I'm just like, I, I get it, I understand what this movie is, let's get on with it, right, and right, the right. same with like The Equalizer, it's like, I just want to see it, like I don't, I, I don't need all this framing and stuff like that, like just, just make it cool. And it and it didn't it didn't do that for me. <laughs> I'm, and I'm How do you see... make Denzel Washington killing a bunch of dudes uncool? How do you do that? You know, and here's the problem too. I didn't see the e I saw American Ultra before I saw the Equalizer. So like it's basically the same third act in both of those movies, but <laughs> one is. of them is hilarious, and one of them is like. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to hurt people, but I have to. <laughs> yeah, like that it's Eeyore. Eeyore is going out on this, like, assassination mission. The Eeyore Equalizer? This, I'd watch the <laughs> shit out of that. It's like suicide mission that Eeyore's going on for thistles. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get my tail back. <laughs> it all just caught up with me. <laughs> no, man. But, so then, but... Uh, you know, I, I wanted to, like, watch some of these shows, and, you know, after seeing The Nice Guys, I'm like, you know what? I, I should give it a chance, right? And Training Day is fucking amazing. I'm so which sitting one is here. It? So what it is is it is a continuation because okay. very, very, like, even for a movie that I don't love, I know it. And early in the, the story, um, the, the cop Kyle gets called in to talk to the commissioner and she's like do you remember alonzo harris and i'm sitting in my house alone watching this and i cheered because i'm like fuck yes you're not just redoing what already happened you're you're letting what happened inform this story right um and that's great and what it is is that because of alonzo harris the la of that world has fallen into fucking ruin like the 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 steps that Denzel Washington's character took 
in that movie has led to it being just a cesspool of crime and violence. Well, which is actually a huge point of that movie is he is he sees himself as a linchpin. And so he, that's why he feels as safe as he does is because he basically feels untouchable. Like that's what the entire thing is, is about how untouchable he feels because he knows King that the Kong that ain't got nothing out, on him. Right. The second he gets taken out, that enti- he knows that that city is going to fall to pieces. So it's really interesting to see that that is what actually happens. Yes. Because that's actually a, that's an interesting argument to be made about that movie is as much as he is the villain of that film, no, for sure, and he's a terrible human being, what does that world look like once he is removed from it? And that's super interesting. And, th- and it's awesome. So then you have you have that basic setup, except like it's nice that the, the grizzled old cop is white and the young gun is black. But then they gets turned on its head in the last scene of the movie. I mean, Bradley Cooper or Ethan Hawke don't show up, which was a little disappointing. I was hoping <laughs> that Ethan Hawke would show up somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah there's still time. And there, there, there is still time, and that's the thing. So, like, that'll be if this. If I'm gonna continue to watch Training Day, like spoilers yeah. for the the end of this this conversation, I'm gonna keep watching it because it caught me. It was hilarious, and I freaking love Bill Pullman, Paxton. I love Bill Paxton. <laughs> Pullman? I don't know which one it is. Paxton? I, I actually I think am not it's sure Bill with Paxton. This one. Do not do Paxton Pullman on me. I I'm I'm usually really good at telling them apart. I just don't know the show well enough to know which one. I'm it pretty is. sure it's Bill Paxton. Um, if I'm wrong, you know, I'll I'll, I'll correct it next week. But I'm, I'm yeah, because Bill Pullman is Independence Day and Spaceballs, right? Bill Paxton is Aliens and yeah, so it's like, Bill Paxton. <laughs> okay, okay. And Twister. <laughs> Twister. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it's Bill Paxton. Um, and he is he's great. He's yeah, I love him as an actor. So he is, and he is just slaying it, and it's it's good. It's a very enjoyable show, and yeah, but yeah. the fact that it's established that whole thing, and like you said, you're like like it or not, you're right. He is a linchpin of that society. So hanging the show on that, fantastic. Yeah. And the action and the characters, like I just want to know more about them, and it it That's... grabbed me by the by the mouth, and it's pulling me along. That's really interesting because the thing about Training Day for me is I actually really love that movie, but it's definitely one of those movies that I just can't go back to, you know, like American history X is the same way. Like one of those types of movies that like super well made, it's right in my wheelhouse. So it hits me in all the right ways when I watch it, but it hits me in just the right way that I don't care to experience it again. (laughs) It's an interesting thing that you bring that up because 100%, I think that's one of the reasons why I don't like it really is because a a real big thing about film for me is rewatchability. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I can't, and if I'm watching a movie and I'm like, I'm never going to go back to this, it, it affects my enjoyment of it. I know myself well enough to know that there are certain things that I'm not going to enjoy. I don't know how to put this. Like, like I get what you're saying for sure. Like, like rewatchability on a movie is definitely what raises it to like the top for me, but there are definitely some movies that I just love that I just don't think I could ever stomach to see again. That's you know, like Bowling for Columbine is a, is another really good example of this. I that movie was so effective for me and like such a good documentary and actually honestly like kind of is the documentary that got me into the idea of like oh documentaries can be watchable and like informative but also like entertaining and like I don't think I could ever watch it again. You know, like I get that. I I, I know exactly what you're saying and. I agree, but it's also, I mean, because I was younger when I watched Training Day, right? So I was like a yeah. freshman, sophomore in high school. And so, like, I, I honestly, after watching the show and enjoying it as much as I did, I can admit that it probably deserves a rewatch through adult eyes. Mm, yeah, but also, I mean, <laughs> if you don't like a movie, you just don't like a movie. Like, don't force yourself to watch it. There's no worse way to get to no, like, solidify no, 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 a no. hatred for a film than to feel like you've been forced into watching it because everybody else is telling you to. Exactly, and that's the thing. Like, I came to it on my own. Like I came yeah. to them, like I should probably rewatch the movie, yeah, because yeah. like I do like this world, and like you said, it checks off a lot of boxes for me. And I love fucking Ethan Hawke; he's one of my favorite actors, mm-hmm. without question. And just I, I honestly, I, I, I think that like I'm never gonna go back to Born on the Fourth of July. I fucking hate Born on the Fourth of July. It's not the fact that I saw it when I was three years old; it's the fact that it's just a bad movie. <laughs> but I think that Training Day. After watching this and doing it, I do want to revisit it. And I also think that that's a good thing about these shows. And it's a way to gauge, you know, how successful they are if it makes you want to go back and watch it. Which brings me to the thing that I want to discuss about this. And that is Lethal Weapon. Yes, man. We got to talk about some Lethal Weapon. And and then we'll we'll close out on it. So you saw the first episode. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about this because, yeah, yeah, yes. I saw the first episode, but you keep going. 
Oh, no, no, no. That's uh, You saw the first episode, uh, which I haven't seen. I saw the ninth episode, which was their Christmas episode, and it freaking followed most of the beats of the movie. I was going to say, that's the one that, that, that everybody was talking about because they thought they were just going to remake the movie for that episode, and, right? And what they, and, and then, the, the second a lady fell onto a car, I was yeah, super yeah. happy. Yeah, and yeah. then to see how they deviated, it... It, it sold me on it. Like, I want to go back and watch all of the episodes that I missed. So here's the thing. Uh, this is definitely firmly in the cat- the other category of, fil- of uh, film to television that we were talking about, where they just decide, you know, the movie is not part of this. We're just going to, like... We're going to take the that. movie and remake yeah. it in and modern like, times. <laughs> but, but even then, it's like... So I saw the first episode, and the way that they tell this story in, in this format is basically like opens up and like Riggs's wife is alive and like you don't really see uh, Murtaugh until like I think like 30 minutes into the episode excellent but, excellent but, 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 like, you know so so that's how the whole thing opens up and then it op- and then of course something terrible has to happen right because there's a whole reason why Riggs is the suicidal maniac that he is oh, so God. something terrible happens in like the first like five minutes and it's one of those things where like Oh, season, season. I need yeah. to. I'm gonna let you finish, but the fa- oh my god, because that was like a huge point of of the of the Christmas episode was yeah. his wife's death, yeah. and I'm like, oh, are they gonna do more of it? But to know that like that that's addressed in the first episode makes oh, me yeah. so happy to watch the first episode. Oh yeah, man. So like, so that's what they do is they basically they look at the movie and they're they're just like, what are all of the really important elements of this film, right? You have these two characters, you have these specific things in their background, and you have these specific goals that they're going for. But other than that, the show just does its own thing. Like it just completely does its own thing. Like like you were saying, they get to the Christmas episode, and that's the first time where they do anything where you're like, oh, are they going to follow the movie? But even in that episode, correct me if I'm wrong, they deviate from that like pretty well at the they end. They deviate right? like, very well from yeah, it. Yeah. Like it's yeah. it's exceptional. So they're not right. They're not going out to try and remake the movies in any fashion. It's just like we know these elements are what hooked people the first time. What can we do now with those elements? And so the way that they approach it is this is like this really awesome character. Um, development right like is yeah. you just watch these guys just become these characters that you know from the movie so you kind of have an idea of where they're going to be and just watching them become that is just so good especially because in this particular instance lethal weapon i think people forget how gritty those movies were like oh, how yeah. people, dark those movies really well were. that's because you know and i totally blame that on lethal weapon 3 lethal weapon 3 is like oh we're gonna be fucking hilarious joe yeah, pesci's and, coming yeah, back joe pesci and all that stuff i mean like because like... lethal weapon 2 you know what? It's a sacrilege, perhaps, but Lethal Weapon Two is the best Lethal Weapon movie. I don't As, necessarily disagree with that. Sure. I think Lethal Weapon One is the better movie, but I can see why two, why you would like two more. But one and two are those movies. Like, yeah, the, the, that's it, the, it's not, yeah. it's that's not a Die Hard, Die Hard Two situation where Die Hard is clearly the superior movie. Right. It is a, it is a, it is a case of the first Lethal Weapon, great movie. Don't get me wrong, I love mm-hmm. Lethal Weapon, but Lethal Weapon Two takes everything you love about Lethal Weapon. And without making it gratuitous, makes it better. Right. Yeah. Lethal Weapon 2 is a fantastic film, which is why it's it's not so weird that they make Lethal Weapon 3. But then you see Lethal Weapon 3 and it's night and day, like almost like. Well, it's I, like they're like, oh, I well, almost the mean pe- that as a pun because like it goes from this like really dark 80s, early 90s series of like looking at like these two cops who are, you know, they're they're two different types of cops but they're actually really good friends by the by the second movie right like and oh yeah putting Riggs these... is family by the by the second movie like right. it's not like so he's like, not just a partner he's part of the family right so there's this whole idea of like there is this loving relationship between the two of them and like what that is like on the streets of that that world's it's LA right that yeah it's LA. LA so like that that works so well and then three is just like goofball like it's like they saw beverly hills cop too many times and they wanted to do that with Riggs and murtaugh like they were just like it, we, can, we can do the eddie murphy thing right it's so it freaking like, weird it's like uh, it not only is it like they saw that and like we'll do that it's also the fact that like you know why people liked lethal weapon 2 joe pesci let's bring him back uh also loaded weapon one did a shit ton of money so let's yeah. lean into the comedy it's right. just like 
Oh. Yeah, but it completely missing that loaded weapon only works when lethal weapon is as dark as it is. Exactly. Like, they, right. So they try and do this whole comedic thing, which is why it then takes them, what, like 10 years to make lethal weapon four, which is just a travesty by the time yeah. you get to it. I don't know. There's parts of lethal weapon four that I enjoy. I think that Chris Rock did a really good job in that one. And I love Jet Li in it. There are parts. Mm-hmm. I think I mean, lethal weapon four to me felt like an apology for lethal weapon three. Yeah, it just still isn't good enough to make up for it. it oh, like, it's, it's one of those things where I still think it probably would have been better off just left alone. <laughs> right. But again, they're characters that you love. You you yeah. you love Mel Gibson's Riggs and you love Donnie Lover's freaking Murtaugh. Murtaugh. They're, they're yeah. beautiful characters. But when he's saying, I'm too old for this shit, like two movies in, and then all of a sudden he's saying that four movies in, at some point you start agreeing with you him. Start, you, you, yeah, I get you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think... So the beautiful thing, I don't know, again, I haven't seen, I've only seen the Christmas episode, but one of the other things that works about Lethal Weapon is that they're in a shit situation, but they're going to, they, they still make jokes. They still, they have a sense of humor in order to survive it. Oh, yeah. And I think that they've nailed that. Damon Wayans, and I don't know who's playing Riggs, but he's fucking amazing. The guy he is, is actually amazing. He's awesome, and I don't know him from much of anything else. I looked up his IMDb the other day, and something Clark, I think, is his last name. Craig, Craig Clark or something. Maybe. I, 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 I didn't up. get a chance to look it up, but you, you can go ahead. Um, yeah, it's, Yes, you're right. He is just fucking amazing. Clean Crawford. That's who it is, not okay. Clark. Um, yeah, Clean Crawford. Like, I don't know him from anything else except this, and it's phenomenal. Like, he is just, he's creating this character for me, you know? And I I think that they needed somebody like that because it's kind of hard to get away from the Mel Gibson of it all. You know exactly, exactly. And you like, need to go. The you could either lean into the skid and get someone really well known for that role, or you go the complete different way and let someone else build this character. And the way that they went was smart. Yeah, yeah. And Especially, so he ugh. he builds this character that's like suicidal. And I mean, because that's part of that's that's Riggs. Like you need that. that yeah, you need that him. aspect of it. That's what makes him a lethal weapon. He's he's grounded, right? Yeah. Like like he is suicidal and he does over the top things, but he's not like it's not like Jim Carrey in the mask, right? Like he's not like crazy, <laughs> like making goofs every chance he gets, right? So so there's humor, but the humor is the, clearly there to help them get through the situation, not not to like make light of the situation, yeah. but literally to keep them alive. Yeah, they're right? like Spider Man, like well right, original right. Spider Man, where it's like I'm fucking scared to shit because I'm a teenage boy fighting adults. And they do a really good job, the two of them, Damon, Damon Waynes and, and Crawford, like they do a really good job of having those characters be scared shitless, but doing the job, right? Like, yeah, like it's exactly. such a weird balance that you have to hit of like that, that person that is, you know, legitimately afraid of what they're doing, but they're also the action hero, right? So like they need to, they need to be doing certain things that are like crazy. So getting somebody in there like Damon Waynes, right? Who's a really good actor. There's no way around it. Like having a good actor. Also, he has the pedigree. He has the Shane Black pedigree because he's in the last Boy Scout. And it's just (laughs) like it was very smart to do that. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Man, yeah, straight up pulls him out of because he did do the the action stint for a while with the last Boy Scout. And um, I feel like every way in. Well, not maybe not Sean and Marlon because they were doing the the Wayans Brothers TV show. But Damon and his the older Keenan Ivory both had like moments where they were action guys. Yeah, yeah. Because what, yeah. the well, Glimmer Man? Is that Keenan Ivory? I freaking Keenan love Ivory the Glimmer straight up Man. Comes out of, like, um, he straight up comes out of, like, the exploitation era when he yeah. with some of the stuff that he was doing. So, yeah, he definitely has a couple of, like, silly but but amazing action movies under his belt. So, like, it's kind of in the Wayne's blood. Like, you're right. Like, they're they're actually capable of doing some of these, these types of roles. So he is a perfect pull for that character. Also, I know? mean, like, just because it exists and it, it informs the conversation, Damon Wayne's Jr. in Let's Be Cops. <laughs> which is which actually is i love that movie it's a fantastic uh, film go if it, you're listening to this enough, go I'll watch let's be cops because it's fucking great it's so yeah. good it's not just like a new girl movie it, those guys are they're so good in that movie no yeah, yeah him and jake johnson are <sighs> really good in that and like their chemistry is really obvious and so when coach came back to new girl for a while like that was a that was actually a really big win for me because i love the two of them together yes and it worked and it totally like and they're and that right there is a mar- those two are actors that you're gonna have to watch. You're gonna have to watch Damon Wayans Jr. You already knew that from Happy Endings, probably. But Jake right. Johnson, like, mm-hmm. I hope that he does not get that stank on him of I've been playing this character on a, a TV show for so long I can't do anything else. And I feel like he's done a long way not to have that 
when yeah, you look at the roles wanna, that he's been doing. If you want to see really good non New Girl esque Jake Johnson, you should check out um you should check out Drinking Buddies. Drinking Buddies is a really good uh indie movie that he that he did. Uh, or Safety Not Guaranteed is Safety where I was gonna go. Is also, yeah, Safety Not Guaranteed is also another good one for him. Yeah. It's, um, he's 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 great. Like even Jurassic World is a different type of character. He's not true. Nick yeah. Miller. But um, so, yeah, so you get these really good leading men to do these things to, like, carry these these shows. And that also helps, like, immensely. So, like, Lethal Weapon benefits from that. Limitless for sure benefits from that. You know, it sounds like you've got some good stuff going on with with Bill Paxton in. Um, in right. And the kid, but, and the, but the guy, the guy playing the, the trainee cop, I couldn't I couldn't tell you anything that he's from. And he's great <laughs> because it's not like I mean, I think that might be another thing that affected training for me is that there's these two actors who I fucking love. Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke are two guys who, like, you know them. You're not going to yeah. be like, mm, I wonder who in this room is Denzel Washington. Right, right, right. Unless maybe Morgan Freeman's there and you're a racist. But <laughs> I had to. I, I, I saw an opportunity. Um, and, and it's just like it, it takes away from it because you're expecting something from both of them. Right. Where, like, Bill Paxton... I don't know. He, he did that thing on Marvel's Agents of Shield, which yeah. is a whole, which is actually a third camp of the movie to TV show. But we can address that some other time. Um, and, and that's like, in its own category, really. And we'll, yeah. We will definitely talk about that. Yeah. And but it really is. And you see him in that, and you're like, oh, usually I think of him as not a total jackass, and he was a total jackass in that show. Yep. So you come to him in Training Day, and the fact that he's the established cop. You, you are already you're like oh he's probably gonna be a bad guy and then like yeah, he, he does some shit but he also does some not shit so mm -hmm. well and shows like that like are guaranteed to to bring in you know nypd blue the shield training day just fits in right with those you know what i mean like right. so that show's gonna be fine if, if as, so, as as long as it finds the the right couple of people to be watching it it's gonna take off and it'll be great so like that yeah Oh, we're, I, I, we're, I think we're the right couple of people. I hope Lethal Weapon 6 around too. I'm so excited to watch more. And yeah. you telling me what the first episode is about, I'm even more excited than I was going into this recording. They, yeah, they do a really good job. The entire episode is dedicated sp just directly to establishing the relationship between the two of them. Like, it, it, you get to learn exactly what you need to know about the two of them in like the first like 20 minutes or so. And then the last 30 is just, here's why they like each other, despite everything. <laughs> Oh, I miss TV like that, you know, like character establishment and arcs and all that. Uh, yeah. But you know what? If we have to look to the TVs from yesteryear, the, the TVs, the movies from yesteryear in order to inform good television like that, I say let it go. Because look at look at how many of that we've talked about already. Right. Mm -hmm. Lethal Weapon, Training Day, Limitless. Those are all within the last year, like year, maybe year and a half, right? Yeah, and there's ones we didn't even mention. I mean, there's there's Ash versus Evil Dead that's been taken off. Westworld is another example of this. Oh my god, like, it's all over. It's it's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, Rush Hour, like yeah, we didn't. We, neither of us have watched Rush Hour, but it's still out there. And mm -hmm. like, and, and honestly, of all the ones that we could have talked about or brought up, Rush Hour, I feel is the only stinker. Yeah, you know, and you know, we're we're ignoring one of the biggest ones ever that actually was like winning awards left and right, and that was Parenthood. Yeah, like like that was a huge one for television that recently in the last like five years. Like it was it was doing amazingly well when it was on. Yeah, yeah, it was. God, Parenthood. I never watched the last season though. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. Just uh, just kind of fell out with it. That's a shame because, like, I think that that show. I think it definitely is not the strongest season, but I think it it wraps up nicely. And like that show deserved for me, like it earned me watching to the end for all of those people involved. Yeah. Again, it was one of those ones that you know, like, life just got in the way, and mm -hmm. no one else was watching it. And oh, you know, it's on Netflix. Maybe we'll catch up later. But you know, you never do. You never go back. Hmm. All right. Anything to add before we wrap this one up? No, Put it in the everybody books. check out those shows we talked about. And if you've got other suggestions, do not be afraid to like tweet and Facebook and all that good stuff to let people know what you guys are watching, too. Yeah, we want to hear from you. Uh, we're on Twitter yeah. at The Say Report. And you can also email us, thesayreport at gmail.com. And that's that's pretty much it, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. Uh, go Pats. Uh, let's, uh, let's make it another back-to-back, -back, right? As long as Brady's playing. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if you've rapped or if we're just going to babble until music comes on. Oh, Maybe. I was going to I was going to rap right. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, So yeah, so uh yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening to the Say Report. I'm Devin Decker. 
I'm Seaton Serwick. Thank you for listening to the Say Report with your host Devin Decker and Seaton Serwick. Please follow the guys on Twitter and Facebook by searching for The Say Report. And you can always subscribe on your podcast channel so this is delivered straight to you and you can enjoy it every week. With apologies to your mother, we'll see you next time.